today I'm going to talk to you about an article I read and then a video that I listened to uh, or an auth uh, someone um, talking about uh, mental health and clutter. Now this first information is from Libby Sander. What does clutter do to your brain and body? And I just took some brief notes from this that I'm going to go over for you and um, talk a little bit about that. And so what I, in my notes, what I wrote was there is good reason to get on board whether it is via con mari method or just having a good clear out session clutter can affect our anxiety levels sleep and ability to focus it can also make us less productive triggering coping and avoidance strategies that make us more likely to snack on junk food and watch t tv shows now, my own research, Libby Sanders' research, shows our physical environment significantly influence our cognitive emotions and subsequent behaviors, including our relationships with others. Um, because each person that you come in contact has a different clutter threshold. So it can... Um, it really can affect your relationships with others. But research shows disorganization and clutter have a cumulative effect on our brains. Our brains like order. And constant visual reminders of disorganization drain our cognitive resources, reducing our ability to focus. The visual distraction of clutter increases cognitive overload and can reduce our working memory. Now, clearing clutter from the home and work environment resulted in a better ability to focus and process information, as well as increased productivity. Um, research from the United States in 2009, for instance, found the levels of the stress hormone cortisol were higher in mothers whose home environment was cluttered. A chronically cluttered home environment can lead to constant low-grade fight-or-flight response, taxing our resources designed for survival. Now, in 2016, U.S. study, for instance, found background clutter resulted in participants being less able to correctly interpret the emotional expressions on someone's face because they are, um, they are distracted by all the things going on behind them behind the person. So, a su and surprisingly, it doesn't go away when we finally get, get, get to bed. People who sleep in cluttered rooms are more likely to have sleep problems, including difficulty falling asleep and being disturbed during the night. Now, multiple studies have found a link between clutter and poor eating choices. And we will talk about that a little bit later as well. Disorganized and messy environments lead participants in one study to eat more snacks, eating twice as many cookies than participants in an, an organized kitchen environment. Other research has shown that being in a messy room will make you twice as likely to eat chocolate bar instead of an apple. Finally, people with extremely cluttered homes are 77% more likely to gain weight. Research does indeed show cluttered home environments negatively influence the participants of our homes, perception of our homes, and ultimately our satisfaction of life. The study 
authors note the strong effect is because we define home not just as a place to live, but as the broader constellation of experiences, meanings, and situations that shape and are actively shaped by a person in the creation of his or her life world. All right. Now, I'm going to... Some notes I took from... Janelle Williams are, um, let's see here, tips, organization and design. Hold on. Let me go ahead. It says, shifting your mindset, how disorganization is connected to your health, how are wellness and, dis and disorganization connected, how does clutter affect your mental health, types of clutter, Steps to decrease disorganization and improve wellness. Okay. Now, the first thing that I took note of is when your surroundings are constantly in disarray, it can make you feel sluggish and unmotivated. You can feel scattered and unable to prioritize your day-to-day -day activities. Clutter is not just the stuff in your closet. It's anything that gets between you and the life that you want to be living. That is a quote from Peter Walsh. And there's the three types of clutter. Physical clutter, gadgets or electronics, magazines, paper, books, files, Digital clutter, social media, apps, computer files, phone notifications, emails, and other distractions. Emotional clutter is guilt, regret, bad habits, toxic relationships, and life challenges. Emotional clutter. Guilt, regret, bad habits, toxic relationships, and life challenges like death, sickness, birth of a child. Emotional clutter is often the cause or related to your physical clutter. Must address our emotional clutter in order to improve the wellness of our spaces. Now, four essential steps she covers. Shifting your mindset. Prioritizing. Start small and declutter steps to improve space wellness your mindset explore the why behind the disorganization time management lack of motivation or is it stress add address certain behaviors or patterns are you easily distracted do you procrastinate once you understand the why, then create a system to or solution to improve the disorganization. Now, prioritize. It creates a sense of purpose, clarity, and facilitates efficiency. Establish consistent routines and create schedules which lead to more structure. This also decreases our anxiety. Schedule time for rest and mental checks. Now, steps to improve space wellness in the starting small. Start with three to five small tasks so you don't overwhelm yourself. Taking on too much at one time will lead to increased stress levels and anxiety. Declutter. Eliminate anything that does not work efficiently or that will clutter your mind. Limit your distractions, obligations, responsibilities if possible. Use the Eisenhower matrix to prioritize your tasks. Now, um, you can look that up i had to look it up but this is what one of the i looked it up i 
under Eisenhower Matrix PDF because I wanted to see if there was anything I could show you. And here is what I pulled up from John Cabot Digital Marketing. And it's a page where you can divide out uh, do first, do next, delegate, delete. So it's urgent, not urgent, the important, urgent, and not urgent, the not essential, delegate, and delete. So that was um, that, and you can find that by just searching it and getting more information uh, on that. All right, now just a little review of what Janelle Williams says on this subject, and I will give all information on articles and Janelle Williams in the description. But she says, as a professional organizer, as a professional organizer, and with a master's degree in public health, Janelle understands just how much our environment affects our health. She shares four steps to get organized and improve your physical and mental well-being. As people protecting our wellness, we cannot do everything. It's important for us to de delegate. Know what you are good at. The other things that you don't know how to do or do well, delegate those. Janelle says, whenever I'm doing my uh, doing talks or public speaking, I really like to take organization back towards health because it does affect our overall health and overall wellness. Health not only relates to our bodies, but our environments. Disorganized spaces lead to increased levels of stress, which is a major contributor to chronic disease. When you, your surroundings are in disarray, you may feel sluggish, unmotivated, and unable to prioritize day-to-day -day activities. Now, that goes back to our eating habits. You know, if we're unorganized and we don't make a shopping list or we don't have a meal plan or we don't know what we're going to cook, the first thing we're going to do is go out and eat or eat something unhealthy. You know, if an apple is on the counter ready for us to grab, we might grab an apple over cookies. If we have water next to the coffee maker, we might drink coffee, I mean, our water, and then our coffee. You know, it. we have to establish those healthier habits, but it only comes from having a less cluttered mind and, a, and mindset. Clutter can cause overstimulation. Your sense will, senses will process stimuli that are not important. Rest becomes difficult, causing fatigue and decreased productivity. Clutter isn't just the physical objects. There's also digital clutter, social media, phone notifications, emails, and emotional clutter, guilt, regret, bad habits, toxic relationships, life challenges. And in the um, podcast right before this one, we talked about uncluttering our email and how to do that. So check that out. Uh, shift your mindset. Explore the why behind the disorganization and address behaviors and patterns. You can then create a system or solution to improve the organization. Now, we're talking about organization, not perfection. Give yourself some grace. Prioritize creates a sense of purpose and facilitates efficiency. Establish consistent routines for more structure which decreases anxiety. Be sure to schedule time for rest and mental checks. Reevaluate what's working, what's not working. How do I 
How is my home making me feel? Declutter anything that doesn't work efficiently or clutters your mind. Limit your distractions, obligations, and responsibilities if possible. And use the Eisenhower matrix to prioritize what is important, what is not as much important, and how are you going to delegate it if it needs, if it can be delegated. That is at home and at work. All right, guys, this one was a little shorter than the one before. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate you. Thank you for watching and listening, and I will see you on the next one.